Worst part was, I was not all right at all. <laughs> yeah, man, that getting older sneaks up on you though, right? I, uh, I had a wake up call for how old I am recently. I was playing pickup basketball at a park and these young guys showed up. One of them bumps into me. My whole life, somebody bumps into me in sports. They're like, my bad, you good? You good? This young guy bumped into me and he's like, sir, are you all right? <laughs> Like, man, I'm sir, are you all right, old? I had no idea. <laughs> Worst part was, I was not all right at all. <laughs> I was limping out of that park like, yeah, it'll be okay later, someday, probably, maybe. I don't know, my wife's got ointments, we'll figure it out. <laughs> it's nice to catch up with, uh, with my body. I've always been kind of like a grumpy old man, especially when it comes to money. I get really grumpy when I hear people fantasize about being rich. So they're always like, oh, dude, if I had a million dollars, I'd get a mansion, Mustang, condo in Hawaii. It's like, dude, you just spent two million imaginary dollars. Your budget was one million imaginary dollars. You're never gonna be rich. You can't even manage your imaginary money right now, man. So we're, always, we're always doing stuff to save money at my house. We shop at Goodwill. I made a terrible mistake. I donated all my kids' clothes to Goodwill. Not funny, buddy. Uh, <laughs> I took the laundry bag down there rather than the donation bag. <laughs> yeah, here's a lesson you can learn from me. They don't like it when you go back to Goodwill and try to undonate. <laughs> so me and my sons were driving around shopping for things we used to own. And we saw a pair of underwear at a Goodwill. My son's like, oh, dad, who's buying their underwear at Goodwill? I'm like, yo, man, the real question is, who is donating their underwear? To I've never been done with a pair of underwear and been like, man, you know what? Somebody else needs to turn with these. Maybe I'll put them on Craigslist. You know, hi, Miles, one owner. Nickel, OBO, nickel, OBO. Let's meet in a Walmart parking lot, do some commerce, we'll make it happen. It, it did make me want to get a brand new pair of underwear and write like two or three names on it so people think they're like the third or fourth owner. <laughs> hey, call me Connor when I'm coming, Franklin when I'm going. Got these for a nickel in a rusty bucket. <laughs> now one way we've been saving money lately is we started shopping at the bulk bin section at grocery stores. It's a great way to save money when you're shopping for teenage boys, because you buy food by the pound in a 50-gallon drum, and you scoop it out like you're feeding oats to a horse. Because that's all teenage boys are. They're just startled horses. Every day they come home from school, I'm like, hey buddy, how was your day? He's just like <laughs> I'm like, shush, 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 boy, it's okay, we're your friends here. Here, you're in a safe place now. There you go, buddy. Here, this will make you feel better. Here, here's first dinner. There you go. Oh, dig in. There you go. My wife's in the background like, hold your hand flat or I'll bite your finger off. <laughs> so I don't know what any of our food is. I have no, it's in like satchels and jars. I got no idea what we have in our house. I saw a bowl of sunflower seeds on the countertop. Grabbed them, threw them in my mouth. My wife had picked up unsalted sunflower seeds. I was so, I'm like, I'm, I was like, am I eating bird seed right now? What is this? I was so mad, I started screaming at my wife. In my imagination. Uh, not a crazy person. Like, what are you doing buying unsalted sunflower seeds? And then in my imagination, she's like, well, we gotta watch our sodium. And then still in my imagination, I'm like, yeah, well, eh, okay, you're probably right. <laughs> and that's how good I am at marriage. <laughs> I had an imaginary argument with my wife that I still lost. <laughs> I'm not even fantasizing about winning this stuff anymore. So I'm struggling through these seeds and my son comes in with a name brand bag of sunflower seeds, walks over, spits them out in that bowl, starts walking away like, I don't really like to get the seeds out of the middle. I'm like, oh no, have I been eating your desalted, sucked on sunflower seeds? <laughs> My wife thinks that's the funniest thing that has ever happened in her life. <laughs> we'll be sitting around, total silence, and then all of a sudden she's like, <laughs> oh, oh, do you remember when you ate those desalted, sucked on sunflower seeds? 
sunflower seeds? Well, that's what you get for having an imaginary argument with me. Maybe next time your imagination will keep its thoughts to itself. Wow, thank you guys, that's so nice. And you don't even know me at all, but I feel like we're friends already, thank you so much. That's how I was raised, you gotta be friends with everybody, right? Because I was raised in a town of 400 people. That is small. You can't hold a grudge in a town of 400 people. Because that guy who was just flirting with your wife might be the only person who could fix your car, okay? I felt sorry for our cop, because like, he didn't have any real authority, because we all went to high school with him, you know? He'd show up at parties like, settle down, settle down. We're like, what are you gonna do, Jerry? You couldn't even wrestle varsity in high school. Are you gonna come around here with your little badge and tell me to put out my tire fire? I don't think so, man. Jethro over there is definitely not gonna stop lighting off his homemade fireworks, dude. Get out of here. So I grew up in a uh, small town with a sister who has Down syndrome and we would just make each other laugh all the time. Um, every single night, my dad would come to me and I would get in trouble for making her laugh. He'd be like, don't sneak in there, she needs her sleep. She's got Down syndrome. His spittle would hit me in the face. I'm like, all right, psycho. <laughs> and then he would go to bed and start snoring like the bones in his face were breaking. <laughs> Do you know those people? Just like, <sighs> Like, uh, is he breathing in or out? What is going on in there? Is he making espresso shots? What is happening? I always thought of my mom with like those little marshmallows just shoved deep in her ear. Little body pillow just cinnamon swirled around her head. Little snorkel sticking out for air. Lady snores coming out of the top of that thing just So once I heard that like cacophony of sounds, I'd sneak into my sister's room, do like an 11 year old version of stand-up comedy. Be like, all right, sis, okay. This is my impression of dad. If dad spoke like Mickey Mouse. Where did I put the remote control? Oh, come on! <laughs> and she would laugh really hard. If you've ever heard the laughter of like a seven year old girl with Down syndrome, it's like a baby's laughter. You wanna hear it over and over again. And my dad would hear that just pure, unfiltered joy. He would get so mad, he starts screaming, and I would just repeat whatever he said, but like still doing the impression. Are you kidding me right now? Come on! She needs her sleep, she's got oh, 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 Down syndrome. She would laugh so hard, the scar from infant open heart surgery would start glowing a little bit. It's like, wow, wow, wow. Uh, I'd see that scar start to glow and I'm like, oh man, I am crushing this show right now. Look at that scar glow, man. So this is wild. So she's a grown up now and uh, this is so wild. She was dating this guy who was dating three other developmentally disabled women. And, um, and you should also know uh, that guy also had Down syndrome. If you don't know that, this would be a pretty disturbing story, I guess. <laughs> So he was, he, no one would talk to him and let him know that he was hurting her feelings. So I went and said, hey man, just so you know, you know, you're kind of hurting my sister's feelings. Maybe break up with those other girls, date her, or break up with her, go do whatever you want. And because I talked to him like a man and was able to treat him like an adult, I got to learn his perspective. Because he looked at me and he's like, don't hate the play, I hate the game. <laughs> like, man, you could totally date my sister. That's the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> she likes you, man. So it's been a big year for my family. My son just finished an Eagle Scout project. And uh, if you don't know this, this is the first year girls could be in the Boy Scouts. And I am all for it. I'm 100% behind it. Because that means it's my sons and their buddies can be the first group of Boy Scouts to ever talk to a girl. Uh, <laughs> That's the second big social change they've seen. The first one was gay men couldn't volunteer. And now for years, gay men have been able to volunteer. And when that happened, I was against it. Because I had told all those parents I was gay, so they would quit asking me to volunteer. <laughs> I 
I'd love to dress up like park rangers. It's you guys, but rules are rules. Oh. Hey, somebody knows how to tie a loophole, I'll tell you what. It's too much. The not knowledge is out of control. They get these kids together in a little circle. They're just like, okay, you see this not? It's gonna save your butt one day. Help you catch a muskrat when you're starving in the woods. And then they wanted me to teach survival tips that I learned in my 20s. And I'm like, well, if you take two ramen flavor packets, put it on one thing of ramen noodles, you will get super ramen. Just drink a lot of water. The next day, you'll pee out Mrs. Dash. So. And that's probably science. So that's a twofer, guys. My, uh, my youngest son just went from Cub Scout to Boy Scout. That's a big deal. Because that means no more Pinewood Derby. You guys know. <laughs> No, those dads are liars, man. Those, they show up with like a scale model replica of a 57 Chevy. They're like, man, my son carved that. Yeah. <laughs> your son carved that. And when you say your son, you mean that seven-year-old with his pants on backwards? <laughs> that kid, the one with the zipper on his butt crack, wide open. His underwear is hanging out like a horse's diaper. That kid carved that? <laughs> Well, let me ask you this. When he was doing the detailed pinstriping, did he uh, uncross his eyes? It would make me so mad because my son did it himself every year. So he shows up with like an untouched block of wood on wheels. His name's misspelled on the side. He's got a Kit Kat bar just glued to the top of the thing. But he's proud, you know, because he built it. And he knows no matter what, win or lose, we're going to sit down as father and son after that race. And we are going to eat the roof of that car together. <laughs> and I, had kids, I had kids super young, too. I had kids very young. But I grew up when my wife brought home a breast pump. That is a lot of real life coming at a young man. If you've never seen one of these things, it's like a funnel on a bottle just right there, a little airtight seal. And then there's like a tube that goes to like a car battery. And the whole thing just sounds like emphysema, just <laughs> We had an old school model too, looked like a defibrillator. We plug it in the wall, our lights start dimming just a little bit. My buddies had no idea what's going on. They're like, what is happening in your house right now? Do you, do you have ghosts? <laughs> no, that's my wife in the next room, milking herself. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, those books I read beforehand did not prepare me for that at all. Those books should be like audiobooks read by a drill sergeant. Okay, soldier, this is how you covertly change a diaper underneath a table at an Applebee's on a two for Tuesday. I wish it prepared me for stuff I never would have expected to have to know as a parent. Like how to hold a baby in a porta potty. Doesn't seem important until the moment it is, man. I almost squeezed my infant son to death for fear of dropping him into that endless pit of despair that is a public park porta potty, man. And if I'm totally honest, I was more worried about me than him. Because if you're a full grown man and somebody sees you drop a baby in a porta potty, you're done, dude. Get a bindle and a stick. You're a drifter now. That's your new life. But if nobody sees you drop that baby in the porta potty, Pull him out, hose him off. He's fine. He's fine. He's absolutely fine. Maybe a little pink eye, but other than that, it's fine. And one thing I wish I knew before I had kids was a uh, parental peer pressure. Because we get tricked into doing stuff we don't have to do. I got tricked into coaching my kids' second grade basketball team. Nobody wants that job. Nobody wants that job. If there's a guy who's like, I'll do it, I'll do it. I'm just saying, double check and make sure that that guy brought a kid, okay? <laughs> I, 
was doing that for 10 weeks. This guy came up to me. He's like, hey, coach, uh, I'm Aiden's dad, and uh, we got a problem. I'm like, yeah, man, we do have a problem. Because I had no idea there was a kid named Aiden on this team. <laughs> I didn't learn any of their names. I learned a very important lesson, though. I learned that every 90-year-old guy with his pants up to his armpits, that guy just coached too many youth sports. Because I showed up, every single father had their shirt tucked in. I'm talking polo, tank top, camo. I'm like, oh, is this the dress code for fatherhood? Okay. Is this what authority looks like to a second grader? Here we go, look at me, I'm in charge. And next thing you know, I'm walking back and forth with all these other dads like, hey buddy, tie your shoes. Tie your shoes, come on, man, come on. Another crazy old man. These kids wouldn't listen to me because my belt loops were touching my nipples. <laughs> my wife has a friend that's really fashionable. And she was like, hey, you've lost some weight. You should, uh, you should wear some tighter pants. I'm like, not on stage, I shouldn't. Uh... <laughs> uh, yeah, man. We have been married uh, for quite some time. And I feel bad sometimes, because she wanted more kids, and I did not want any more kids, so we compromised. We got a little female dog. It's the same, right? Yeah. <laughs> you guys are like, yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah, that's right, it's the same, it's good. <laughs> no, she dresses it up like a little girl, and uh, me and my sons pretend she's not crazy. <laughs> this is how bad it is in my house. We got a uh, tiara for our dog. We have a fake fur coat that the dog wears in the winter to stay warm that she wears on top of an actual fur coat that grows out of her own skin. I don't know why this product exists. We love her very much. Right after we got her, she was attacked by a stray dog in her backyard. My wife turned into Mama Bear. She saw it happen. She's like, oh, no, no, no. Yep, 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 yep. She's never been in a fight in her life, but when she punched a stray dog in the face, she turned into like a featherweight MMA fighter, just got her first knockout punch. She's like, woo, woo. Her hair snapped into cornrows, woo. Did you see that? I knocked that dog out. I was like, yeah, you did. And I'm gonna tell you this, I am done killing your spiders, all right? <laughs> Yeah, like I said, so we've been married 16 years. Best part about that, no online dating. I've never even seen it. I don't know what it looks like. All my buddies do it. Nobody's ever excited like the first time I ever asked out my wife. None of my buddies are ever like, oh dude, big date tonight. Finally mustered up enough courage to ask out corndog underscore 87 or whatever. <laughs> so I don't know what any of that stuff looks like. I got a Married Guys app. Married Guys app is Fitness Pal. Yeah. You log your food and your physical activity, and then you just sort of wait to die, I think. <laughs> this thing taught me my morning latte was the equivalent of drinking three donuts. <laughs> Every single morning, I would start my day just drinking three donuts, right before I ate like five or six donuts. <laughs> so I gave up the latte, and now I can eat three more donuts. This thing is awesome. <laughs> All day long, it goes off in my, in my pocket, just like, ding, hey, congratulate your fitness partner. She just ran three miles. Like, what is my wife's phone doing all day? Hey, uh, oh, you need to check on your fitness partner? Uh, he just ate three gas station burritos. <laughs> so I was trying to get into shape, man. This is so embarrassing. I, uh, I accidentally joined a gym for female bodybuilders. <laughs> I didn't know, okay? I just walked in one day and I was like, huh, seems like a lot of high-pitched grunting's going on here. Um, am I gonna be the only guy working out here? Is that gonna be weird? And the lady who owned the gym was like, uh, no, what, no, no. Give me your credit card. So, that's how I became a member. I got a free workout session with the trainer, six foot one Austrian woman. She's like, okay, so what fuck gonna do first? Are the hip thrusters. Do you know how to do the hip thrusters? Like, lady, I don't even know if I know what you just said, okay? I'm gonna tell you this, I am scared to death of you. She's like, I get that all the time. So what we're gonna do, 
So we're gonna have you scooch down, scooch down low. You're gonna lean back. We're gonna take a 35 pound plate. We're gonna put it right here. You're gonna drop your hips nice and low. You're gonna raise them up. All the way, no, no, all the way. Squeeze the buttocks at the top. Squeeze it, pinch it. Okay, very good. Now drop the buttocks. There you go, we're gonna do 20 of these. So now I am the only man at an all female gym. I see a woman squatting 250 pounds while I'm just like gently cradling a 35 pound plate weight. And I'm looking around like, this is the most vulnerable I've ever been in my whole life, dude. And the worst part was, I was not gonna make it to 20. My legs started doing that like shaking failure thing. I'm slowly sinking into the ground. I'm using my head to like bounce up and down. I'm squealing a little bit. Hey, 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 hey. I'm arguing with the trainer. I am squeezing my buttocks, you Nazi psychopath. <laughs> so. Been trying to work out from home more lately. <laughs> I looked at this one thing called a swim treadmill. If you've never seen it, it's like a long hot tub. It just shoots water at you. You swim in your backyard like this. Because every trainer will tell you, best form of exercise, struggling for your life in a river somewhere. <laughs> this thing is nuts. Hey, Phil, you look good. What have you been doing? Just waterboarding myself. <laughs> hey, I lost 20 pounds. Also admitted to three crimes I didn't even commit. <laughs> Here's the crazy thing. I saw one, the off button was in the front. <laughs> and it, and it seemed like a mistake. You don't have enough juice in the tank, you're just stuck in your backyard like, Somebody drink up! And I'm not just I'm serious! <laughs> That'd be a weird funeral, wouldn't it? Hey, what happened to Phil? Oh, uh, he drowned in a class one rapid in his backyard. <laughs> Yeah, you guys, I gotta get out of here. Thank you so much. You've been a terrific audience. Thank you so much.